Good morning, family. Good to have you here this morning. Come on in. If you're outside, we would love for you to be with us, to sing with us, to rejoice. Um, and you know what? If maybe it's been a rough week, maybe a rough week, and you're just, mm, you're struggling, um, that's okay. Let us sing for you. Let us worship for you. Um, allow yourself to rest in God's presence. But I want to encourage you. It's a great thing just to, to allow yourself um, to reject some of the feelings of, ah, I'm not sure I'm feeling it today. Um, and just to, to begin worshiping the Lord because the body begins to, those feelings begin to come and you realize, you know what, I'm going to stand on God's word today. I'm going to stand on his truth. My name is Sean. I'm the worship pastor here at Abundant Life. We welcome you if you're online. Um, it's great to have you with us. Um, and wherever you might find yourself, again, we, we invite you to, to, to come with us, worship with us live here in Cupertino. Um, but wherever you find yourself, we say thank you. Um, and uh, we would just love to see you. Uh, but for those who are here, I just want to say there's a great service ready for you. But God is here. He's in this place. He hasn't left your side. Um, and we're just going to acknowledge that today. We're going to spend time worshiping him. We're going to have an opportunity just to hear from his, from his word and from um, just to see what God's doing um, across this world. Um, but before we continue, I just want to pray for you. Um, allow ourselves just to, to kind of level set where we're at. So if you would, if you bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that you are here in this place. I thank you, God, that you have never left us. You have never forsaken us. That right now we can be assured of your hope. And we receive your grace and mercy. And God, I pray that, that we would make the decision now to worship your name. To celebrate your goodness. To rejoice in all things. May you be glorified. And it's in this mighty name we pray. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's worship our Heavenly Father. our story. Well, I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? You recognize that? It was my tomb till I made you. And I was free Change. You call my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. You call my name, and I ran out of that grave. Day. 
story continues. See if you can recognize yourself in this. I needed rescue, my sin was heavy. The chains break the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing.
Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise this morning, if you would. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that he is God, righteous and true. You are the lion and the lamb, O Lord. There is nothing on earth that can stop your will, your desires, your plans. You are holy. You are worthy. And we thank you, Father. We're going to learn a new song this morning. It's called Holy Forever. We're just going to think about his holiness. It's worthy. A thousand generations are falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all have gone before us, and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name, you stand above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all and the angels cry oh Oh! 
Amen. I want to encourage you this morning. As I was reading this week, and if you've ever, when you read God's word and something stands out to you and you look at it and it just is like, oh, that's, that's, this is different. This is important. I encourage you, write it down or just ask the Lord, what do you want me to know about that? I was reading through um, Isaiah and it was talking to chapters, maybe 10 or 11, about the righteous branch. This is a prophecy of, of Jesus. And it mentioned, and I don't want to get this wrong, I pulled it up here on my phone just so I say it correctly. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. Now for some of us, that's an odd term because we don't understand what that means to have the fear of the Lord. It's not, a, ooh, it's God. It's a holy reverence. It's saying that there is nothing else in my life that could possibly be more important. And, and it made me think about one of my favorite Proverbs, Proverbs chapter two, you've heard me say it many, many times. In order to understand the fear of the Lord, you've got to hunger and thirst for, for the Lord. You've got to hunger and thirst for his presence. And it uses images and it uses analogy. You, you need to hunger and thirst for it like you would for hidden treasure, like you would for gold or I think I may have mentioned last week, or like you would for a lost iPhone or a lost Android phone. Because see, when we begin to understand the fear of the Lord, the, the, the reason why we, we sing to Him, all of the things that go on in our life become lesser, and He becomes greater. And for some of us, maybe it's, it's been difficult or maybe for some of you, you say, I don't have time to spend time with the Lord. I'll go again to my challenge that I'll continue to give. If I had the ability to give you one billion dollars, if all you had to do was spend an hour a day with the Lord, would you figure that out? Would you make that work? Let's just say I, you needed to do that for a year. Could you pull that off? Yeah? I think everyone would say, yes, yes, I could. And if you're saying, no, I can't, come talk to me. We got your priorities straight. <laughs> but here's the rub. Spending time with the Lord is so much more valuable than money. Because see, when we begin to, to understand his holiness, his greatness, how worthy he is, he becomes priority. Everything else falls away. That difficulty in your workplace becomes lesser because he has the ability also to give you joy in it. The hardship financially becomes lesser because he has the ability to multiply all of your needs and provide for you. Everything looks different within the context of our Heavenly Father. That's why we love the fear of the Lord. Because there is nothing else. There is no one else who has the power to change our lives and our situations. And we don't serve Him like a celestial Santa Claus. Just give me, give me, give me, Lord. We serve him because he first loved us. And then as we begin to submit to him and, and empty ourselves from our own personal desires, he begins to fill us with his. Then you can begin praying. Then you will see your prayers answered. But it's only after we've spent that time and we've aligned ourselves with him. Amen? I know you're thinking, well, that sounds like a rebuke, not encouragement. <laughs> Trust me, it's an encouragement. Because no matter what you're going through this week, this last month, this last year, God can give you the strength to endure through it. Or he can remove you from that situation. I don't know what it's going to be, but you can have joy in the midst of it. Why do I say that? Because it's his promise. If you don't believe his promise, why are you here for? 
Maybe you're interested and you don't know and we'd love to talk to you. But if you call yourself a Christian, trust his word. Believe it. We're just going to continue to spend time singing of his greatness, his holiness, his worthiness. the freedom to sing. Worthy of every song. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. You're worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. You're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. You're worthy, worthy of every breath we can ever breathe.
me put my trust in you, oh God. Righteous King. just want, if you would, bear with me. While the music continues to linger, would you be willing to ask the Lord just right now, God, what do you want me to know about this? Have a vision of him in your, in your mind. Maybe it's in a tranquil spot. Imagine seeing Jesus. He's the physical manifestation of an invisible God. Place Jesus in your imagination, in your, in your vision right now, and ask him, what do you want me to know about this? And just receive from him right now. Let him speak to you. Jesus, what do you want me to know about this? For some of you, you're thinking, no, there's no way that's him. But believe me, when your mind is placed on Jesus, as you begin to, to place your, your focus on him, the words and the thoughts that come to your mind right there, that is prayer language. And for those who have the faith to ask the question, I would imagine he's speaking to you about rest, abiding in him, receiving, not worrying, but allowing him to walk with you, to lead you. How do I know that? Because that's what he tells me. I know a lot of us struggle with that. And I just want to finish this time of worship with God speaking over you. God, what do you want me to know about this? Can I put my trust in you? But it's hard. He knows that. He knows that. Jesus, we thank you for what you've spoken to us. I pray, Lord, that right now we would put our trust in you. You are the creator of the universe. There is nothing greater than you. I pray that we would continue to stand upon that rock of faith right there and believe. May you be glorified. 
And it's in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of God, we pray. Amen.